In this video, we're going to see how we can install SQL Server 2016, as well as the management tools which we'll use to run scripts and interact with SQL Server and our databases. Now, unlike older SQL Server versions, these are now separate components. So we're going to have two installations to contend with. So if you head off to this website you see here, you can download the SQL Server Management Studio software, which is a little over 900 meg. Now ahead of time though, I've got the ISO of the SQL Server 2016 extracted on my server here. And I've got that located there under a software folder. And also under this patches and tools folder, I've got a copy there of the management software, obviously which you can get at this URL here. So before I start the installation of SQL Server though, let's just go back to my software folder where I have a script here, which is going to help us open up the required ports we might need for SQL Server. So let's just open that up. And in here, you'll see we are going to be wanting port 1433 TCP inbound opened up. Uh, some of the other ports here we may not need, depends obviously on our installation of SQL Server and what we want to do with it. But some of the other ones I've listed here are 4020 for the broker service. I've listed 1434, uh, useful if, of course, we are wanting to have a named instance of SQL Server. And of course, uh, there's our ports there for reporting services if we're using SSL as well as obviously just the regular HTTP port. And you'll see at the bottom here, I've also allowed in ping. Now again, these aren't all required, but in a firewalled environment, we may need to open some of these. So I'm just going to select all and I am going to run this. And that's that. All right, so let's go and start up the installation of SQL Server now. We'll close this window and we can close this window. And we're gonna to go to our software folder where I have SQL Server and run setup. Now, if you are familiar with previous SQL Server installations, then this installation screen is gonna look very similar. So over on the left here, we are going to select installation and then we're gonna choose the first option here to install a new SQL Server installation. But do take note, by the way, that you can also locate the management server tools here from this second link. All right, so let's start up the installation. And the first thing we'll do is accept the license terms and click Next. Now for my lab here, I'm not going to use Microsoft Update. We won't worry about that. We'll just click Next. And also, because this is a lab, I will uncheck this box so it doesn't download any updates right now. I'm not really interested. Let's click Next again, and it's going to do a prerequisite check. Okay, and we've passed. You do see a warning here for Windows Firewall, but that's just telling us that we do have a Windows Firewall active, so we can ignore that. We've already opened the required port, so let's just click Next again. Okay, now with this screen, this is where we'll choose what features of SQL Server we want to install. Now with older versions of SQL, we'd install the management tools. But of course, this isn't available here. It's now a separate download. So we'll just choose the minimum things we need. We need our database engine services, full text search, and reporting services native. Now that's all I need, but of course, you might elect to install more of these features depending on your requirements or whatever your DBA says to install. Now I also like to install integration services as well, but of course it's not a requirement. Just the three up the top here are. All right, now these default paths are fine for me. I'm gonna click next. And this moves us on to the instance configuration screen. And since this is going to be a dedicated server for SCOM, which of course I wholeheartedly recommend, we're going to leave the default instance of SQL Server. But if you are using a named instance, then of course you'll not only have to select it here, but also make sure you've got the appropriate firewall port open too. So let's just click next, nothing to do. Okay, now here's where we will need to perform some sort of configuration. Now remember, in an earlier video where we created our service accounts, well, we also created a SQL service account. So right here is where we'll need to configure that for use with our SQL server. So for our top uh, service here, SQL server agent, first of all, I'm gonna set that to be automatic. 
And then in the account name field, we'll select this little drop down arrow on the right. We'll choose browse. And we'll enter in the name of the SQL service account we created. So if I just type in S with a dash and then hit check names, I should be able to see all my accounts here. And there's my SQL service account. So we'll select that, we'll click OK. And then we'll click OK again. And in the password field here, we'll obviously need to enter in the password for that account. So let me just type that in. Now the final step that we want to perform on this screen is to check the collation we're going to be using. So we'll select the collation tab. And we need to make sure that it is set to SQL Latin 1 General CP1 CIAS. Now if it isn't for some reason, although this is the default, make sure you change this to this collation because it's the only supported collation for SCOM and we can't go back and change it later on. So this is an important step to check. Just make sure this collation is exactly how you see it. All right, well, obviously everything's good. So let's click next. And we'll have to then specify an authentication mode, which I'm going to leave at Windows Authentication. And at the bottom of this window, we can specify the accounts that will be SQL Server Administrators. Now, you've probably got a group in your organization that's responsible for administering SQL. So you could click Add and just simply add that group in. Now, for me, I'm just going to add in my SCOM Administrators group, since any account I create for administering SCOM is going to need SQL access anyway. So I'm going to add that in. And since I'm logged on right now using a domain administrator's account, let's just add in the current user as well. All right, well, I'm not going to make any changes to the other three tabs. I'm just going to click Next. Now, since we chose to add in the reporting services feature, we've now got the option, obviously, in installing it and configuring it, which is what we're going to do. So let's just leave the default and click Next. And we're ready to install. Now, do take note of this path down the bottom here. This is where our any file has been created. So if we just copy out this path and we'll go to Windows Explorer and we'll have a look at that path, we can use this configuration file to silently install SQL Server if we wish. Now we will need to make a couple of modifications to it to make it truly silent, but I'll show you how to do that as well. So let's open it up. So the things we'd need to do to make this a true silent installation of SQL is we'd need to accept the SQL Server license terms, just like we have to when we run the GUI installation. And it really doesn't matter where we enter it in, we'll enter in somewhere like there. Now the next step would be to change our quiet parameter to true, because we don't want to see any user interface in a silent installation. Now, the other one we don't want to see is any user interface. So I would simply comment that line out. Now, one thing that I would like to do, though, is when I'm doing a silent process flag from false and set it to true. Now, that way, what happens is when the installation of SQL Server is occurring, then all of the output from the setup routine is going to be sent to your command console. And so that can show you not only if you're getting any errors, but it'll also let you know when the installation is complete. Now, the default, of course, is set to false, so it won't show anything at all. But for this video, I'm going to turn that one on. All right, well, let's scroll down and we're going to locate our SQL Service account line. And we'll need to add in a password as well. So we're going to add in the account service password. And obviously, that is my password in plain text. This is a lab, so I'm OK to do that. And let's scroll down again. And one thing I'll point out whilst I'm here is this line here, which is where we're using mixed mode authentication, excuse me, Windows authentication. Rather, if you want to use mixed mode authentication instead of this, then we could add in a couple of lines here to use mixed mode authentication. So we would set the security mode to SQL and then obviously enter in the password. All right, now that is it. Now we could save this file. In fact, I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to save this file, but I am first going to comment out these two lines because I'm not going to use the SA account. So you can just remove them altogether or just comment them out as I've done. All right, so let's save this. I'm going to save this into a, well, I don't have a temp folder, but let's create one. And I'm just simply going to call the file configuration.ini. All right, 
let's save that. And let's go back to our SQL Server installation. And I'm going to cancel it and say yes to cancelling. As we've already run through the wizard, we don't really need to see it again. So this time, we're going to run through the same installation, except we're going to use our configuration file. So let's see how we can install it now, silently, from our command prompt. So let's go and open up a command prompt. And I'm just going to change to my software folder, and then the SQL Server folder. So we're going to run the command setup.exe followed by our configuration file and that configuration file obviously is at our C temp location. And that's it. Now when we hit enter, remember we chose to show the output by setting the indicate progress option to true. So we should expect a lot of output to be hitting our command prompt here, which you can obviously see is happening. Now this is obviously going to take a while to install as you might expect, so I'm going to pause the video and come back once this is done. Okay, I'm back. The installation is done. We now have a working SQL Server, and you can verify that by clicking Start. And you should see some SQL things on our menu here. Great, so our next step is to be installing the management tools. Now, obviously, I've already downloaded those in my Patches and Tools folder, as I said at the start of the video. So let's head over to that folder. And that is in here. And this one's pretty difficult to install. What we need to do is double click the file and choose install. <laughs> that's it, <laughs> I'm actually serious, that's it. But whilst this installation's going, let's just scoot back to our command prompt and I'm gonna show you how to do a silent install for this file as well. So we just need to simply change into the folder that has that file. which would be this one, and run the following command. And that's it. So let's just give our installation here a moment to do its thing, and I'll come back once it's done. All right, well, the installation of the management tools is complete, and obviously now if we go and click Start, and let's just click Expand, we can see we've got a whole lot of SQL Server things recently added, so now we can fire up the SQL Server Management Studio. And I'll just connect using my account here. And now on the left, if we go and expand Databases, since we installed Reporting Services, we should see the Report Server Database, which we do. Okay, well that wasn't overly hard to do. We now have got a working SQL Server and it's ready for us to install SCOM. So let's move on to the next video where we'll install our first SCOM management server. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'd like to thank you for watching.